So I was sent an article on Twitter by quite a few of you actually, um, from Igor's lab, which was kind of a collaborative testing sanity check of something that Bill Zoid said regarding 12th gen temperatures. And we'll take a look at that today. Funny thing about this, this actually isn't new. We, we've talked about this in the past with other versions of Intel. We've talked about it with AMD. Um, but it seems like all of these things have kind of like created the perfect storm with 12th gen. And it kind of leads to, well, just Intel being Intel. EVGA is proud to announce their new X570 for the Wind motherboard. With multiple RGB and ARGB LED headers, fin stack heatsink switchable BIOS, and 15 phase digital VRM, the X570 for the Wind motherboard brings EVGA's legendary build quality and performance to Ryzen processors. To learn more and see the full feature set, follow the link in the description below. Uh, okay, so some of you might now either have read the article and already know where this is going, but we, we want to test this for ourselves. And those of, some of you may have no clues what we're talking about when I even reference the past. First things first, uh, this 12th gen Intel is a bigger die because of the fact that it's got E cores and P cores. You'll notice it went from a square to a rectangle, so it's longer. Um, with that, a new socket type. Of course, we're talking about LGA 1700, which is found right here in our Apex board. Yes, we've already know these boards have caught fire. We already know why the capacitor is backwards. We talked all about it. Our board's fine, but with constant socket changes, which for the most time, for the most part in Intel didn't matter because it, it retained the same size. And we're talking about just the small square size of a typical Intel CPU. But now that they're longer, um, the only thing that changed on the previous size was the amount of pins in that array. But the size overall in the substrate stayed the same. Now that we have a larger substrate and more pins, 1700 of them to be exact, we no longer have this nice square thing we have to have tension on to keep cool we now have this rectangle. Compound that with the fact that we have shown a million times in the past, going all the way back to like my X99 CPUs, that they're not flat, that the IHS on them become very concaved or domed. I've had some that were completely concave where if I start lapping it, uh, it's a perfect square starts forming, or in this case, a rectangle will start forming. And then it takes forever to reach the center. And what that shows you is that it's either concaved or domed if it starts to appear in the center with the sending marks, it's domed. If it appears on the edges, it's concaved. The flatter the surface, the better the cooling because of even tension and even distribution of heat across the cooler. If you have a domed section, that means you have an air gap, which has to be filled in by thermal paste. Thermal paste will do its job, but it's not gonna be a very uh, efficient transfer of heat because it's traveling through more thermal paste to transfer. The more metal we have touching without thermal paste needing to fill those microscopic peaks and valleys, the better heat transfer we're gonna get. Couple that with 12th gen now having a really tall socket where it's much taller than it was previous uh, generations of sockets. We now have an issue. And the issue is not just the fact that Intel's socket is taller, the issue is the fact that we have a million different types of coolers out there, which now have to be compatible with a taller socket and a lower socket from previous generations. And what a lot of brands have done is they have just basically said, oh yeah, our previous mounting mechanism works and we'll just ship that and call it 1700. Where what they'll account for is the extra spread. In fact, if you look closely at this motherboard here, you'll see now instead of one set of holes, you have two sets of holes which kind of overlap. So you get this sort of a eight shape or like a snowman looking thing. The problem with that is a lot of cooler manufacturers took that and went, oh, as long as we just make it wider and we have a bracket now that has adjustable slides on it. See all these, hear the wobbling? That's because all of these can slide. They go, okay, as long as we can match the width, everything's fine. The problem is if we take a look at typical ACID tech retention system, and I'll use this one right here and I'll kind of put one together here real quick. It threads through the motherboard into this, which goes on the back of the motherboard. You thread this down until it stops, right? You got your cooler that goes through it. You take this nut and you thread it down till it stops. That's all fine and dandy. You notice there's no springs or anything in there. It's just go until the thread stop. That's all fine and dandy with the old sockets that had no Z axis height change. But now that we have 1700, which has a Z axis height change that's taller, Cranking down a retention system like this, which a lot of manufacturers are shipping with their 1700 compatible coolers, is putting far too much tension on the CPU. And what's that causing? It is causing an actual bow to happen with the CPU itself. Now our CPU or my CPU here, if I look at it, 
is not bowed. Uh, I know you guys can't see this on camera, but I'm just sort of standing, checking it myself. I'm linusing everything today. I'm just standing, checking it myself. Yeah, that's flat. It's flat. There's no bow there. You can't see this on this camera either. Maybe we'll try and get a single shot of it though. But if I take a look at my edge here, I am seeing all kinds of light, which tells me my IHS is concaved. I've got light in the center and not on the edges. So we got a concaved. So this is something we've known with, with Intel CPUs for a long time. I've lapped them for generations. We've done videos about it. We've showed you how I've dropped as much as 10 Celsius by just lapping the CPU. But what Igor's lab in Buildzoid has found is that by raising the height of the retention system here means that the CPU is not sticking as high above it, bringing it up closer to the CPU is reducing the tension and causing less of a bowed effect because it's not over tightening as it comes down. The issue I believe fully stems from these old types of Asetek retention sockets and, and hardware that you'll find with your standard blocks. If we take a look right here, there's a Torx, Torx, Torx and Torx. That makes the retention system come off. They put a one millimeter washer around those and put it back down. So what that does is it brings the whole socket system up a little bit higher, which is supposed to alleviate uh, some of the pressure. So it just brings this piece right here, the, the door, closer to the top of the CPU. They say that's led to a 5C reduction in temperatures. We'll be using a 360 AIO right here from Fractal Design. This is actually an old setup. We'll use the old system that I know people are doing. They're taking their old coolers, plopping them on 1700, and then saying temperatures are bad. So let's test it with the old hardware and uh, we'll get our baselines and then we'll test it with the spacer mod and then we'll test it with a lap mod. So I just tested the Cinebench run. It's looping right now, it's set for 30 minutes. Remember, it will take time for all the coolant to go reach its max temperatures, but it's funny because I use the Kingpin thermal paste, the temperatures are already <laughs> so, so good here. I mean, look at this. Low 70s, 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 70, 75, 75, 67, 74, 73, right? If you look at the chart though, you can see they are trending upward, right? See how this, if you draw a line through the average, it's going up. So we need to let this go until it completely stabilizes and see where it's gonna go. Like right off the bat, I would say this is not a problem. And the funny thing is I'm using the old hardware, which is cranked down as high as it should go, which is very tight. This is what I hate about when we're sent articles saying, look, blah, 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 saying X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z is hot, yada, yada, yada. I mean, enter whatever is trending there. When we did our 12th gen video, people were messaging me going, dude, it's so hot, it's super hot. Why didn't you talk about the temperatures? Because this is what we were experiencing. Look at these temps. I would not call these bad. I mean, sure, they're water cooled right now in the 70s, which some people would say is, is warmish. I don't even have the fans at 100%. They're at 75. And it's just a basic Asetek AIO. There's absolutely nothing spectacular about this. So this is not temperatures that would make me raise an eyebrow and go, something's wrong here. Um, like when we did the 12th gen test in the Corsair 1 and that was hitting 100C, that's obvious because of the size of the cooler. And it makes me wonder if maybe there's a mounting issue with that in terms of this particular issue that was mentioned. But I'm still gonna go through with the, with the washer test to see if we see any sort of change in the temperature whatsoever. And I did actually enable the ASUS enhancements, not the core clocks. So for instance, if we look at core clock here, you'll see we're running at 4.9 if we didn't drop it. Yeah, 4.880, so that's actually 4.9. Look at that, locked speeds, nothing changing. Our E-cores are down to 36.85, so 3.7. No throttling, no fluctuating, no issues whatsoever. But we'll let it go for like another five or, five or 10 minutes just to make sure that the temperatures are not gonna continue to climb. And then we'll show you the mod that uh, Igor's lab and Buildzoid were talking about. Now, and the, the thing about this kind of test is it's gonna be so much variance between motherboard types. Are they all using the exact same retention system? Remember how Threadripper had some that were troublesome and some weren't? I don't know if that's the case with this particular retention socket. So it's been running for a while now, as you can see, and our temperatures are not climbing whatsoever. So if we look at 11 and 12 again, yeah, they didn't, they never spiked any higher. That's 78, 78. 80 with solar max. All right, so you know what we need to do now? We need to stop the test and look how fast this temp shot down. 25, 22, jeez. All right, well, next thing we gotta do now is we are going to do the washer method. And then after that, I really wanna lap the CPU. Like I wouldn't have even looked at these temps and be like, I have to lap this CPU. Some of the other ones like the 9900K and whatnot, we definitely had to lap those, but. I have to tear this apart now. So I'm leaving the CPU in the socket because I want to protect the pins. That's something that 
Igor's lab had even mentioned, but I'm gonna go one step further and then I'm gonna actually like electrical tape down the CPU real quick. The socket's a little different than it was in the past. In the past, it like fully surrounded the CPU. I'm taking my iFixit with the Torx head. These are very loose. I can, that's about as tight as they were. So just keep in mind how tight they were. So that's the bottom. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and find washers that will fit that. Okay, so I actually happened to find some plastic washers that, from an old water block. We just need to screw this back down. There we go. So not too tight, just snug. So that's that one. Like if I were to do that now, it'd be a very uneven mount. So we have to repeat the process on this side over here. So they say one millimeter is ideal. If you go higher than that, the issue is now you don't, you don't, you can't have the retention go up higher than the CPU or you'll be touching the retention and not the CPU itself. So now, same thing. I'm gonna put the same amount of kingpin on there. And who knows, maybe this is the reason why we were cooling so well was I was using the KPX, which I use on everything now because, you know, kingpin fanboy here. All right, let's just start the test here and let's see what the initial spike is. That's already 5C lower because it spiked last time to 70. I hate when smart people are right. Okay, so our temps, as you can see, are just not climbing anymore. Uh, 72, 72, 70, 69, it's about the same, honestly. If we look at 11 and 12, again, the two hottest cores, 78, 78, they max out 79, 79. We can't call that one degree anything other than potential margin of error. It's almost like this CPU doesn't have whatever issue other CPUs are potentially having. Maybe this one's a little less concave than others. Maybe the Tim inside better applied. It doesn't say confidential on it. We, for the, ever since 10th gen, have been getting ones that are stamped like the retail versions. So I don't know. I, I don't know necessarily what it is that's causing, because I mean, I just did the spacer mod and nothing really seemed to change. Uh, the only thing I can suggest at this point now is I'm gonna try lapping it just to see if anything improves there. But that doesn't mean that this particular fix isn't going to work for you guys. Uh, it clearly worked for Igor's lab and it worked for Buildzoid. Let's take it back apart again and then let's, uh, let's lap it. So one thing that's really interesting here, if we look at this pattern on the cooler, you can see how in the center it's a little thicker right there. That's actually indicating our, our our concave right there. So because there's concave, which means there's more gap between the cold plate and the CPU IHS, means there's room for more thermal paste there, which is why it's thicker there. And you can see it's thinner around that because that's where it's higher. That didn't really appear the first time. It appeared the second time with it being under less um, tension. So I'm really kind of curious now as to how this is gonna perform after lapping it. So I wanna see the initial pattern looks like. And you have to do this on, on a sheet of tempered glass because it's perfectly smooth. The hardest part here is getting this, the pressure down even on the CPU. If you start putting more pressure on one side, you can actually lap it crooked. Uh, Kingpin has a neat sanding disc that does all this. You just hold it on there. But I've had good success doing it this way multiple times. And the water, it's distilled water and it ain't gonna hurt nothing. It just keeps the uh, sandpaper from getting clogged up. So the initial pattern is exactly what I expected it to be. If you look on that, you can see the four corners are definitely higher. All right, so as you can see, I flattened the IHS down to where the copper is uniform now. And I know it looks super rough. That's because of the fact that it was 400 grit and then we went all the way down to 1500. Uh, it's very, very smooth. Those are just scratching marks um, from the sanding. I know people are gonna be like, but that's gonna affect the cooling. No, it's not any more than the machine marks in your cold plates affect cooling. It's more important for it to be flat than it is for it to be polished like a mirror. You don't need it to be like a mirror. Um, so anyway, here we go. Repeating the test, same standoffs and stuff we had before, only now we have a lapped CPU. Predictions on this one? <sighs> May, I'm thinking maybe a couple degrees at the most. I mean, there was a pretty big concave. In fact, when we tested it now with the light, like Phil was saying that there was like the teeniest, tiniest of a sliver on one side. And that could be the ruler itself, because again, this is not the most 
scientifically precise straight edge. But the fact that you could see light through there before, like a lot of light versus now, um, I'm feeling pretty confident with this. So let's watch in real time as I start this test before they spike to about 65, 66, and then they sort of normalize around 72. Remember, this is lapped CPU. Yeah, really unchanged. The question is gonna be what happens now over time, which uh, I think will be realistically about the same. There's another theory right now that I was thinking about as I was doing this that could end up potentially being an issue, and that is if I lapped enough material down and then we had raised that socket up, if I've now kind of you know, sort of counteracted that to where maybe it's too level now, and now maybe the CPU cooler isn't getting a good enough mount. But I mean, that would mean I would have had to have taken a millimeter of IHS off, and I don't think that's the case, because I don't think it's even that thick. So this is what we're gonna call it. Uh, I'm essentially calling this one no change. Lapping, not a, I mean, it void your warranty, obviously. But if you uh, are not scared to do it, and you have a very weird concave CPU, I recommend doing it. We do it with all our Intel CPUs, but look at this, the temperatures, 72 is the max on core one and two, 70s here, 75 on five. If we go down to 11 and 12, which is our hottest, 78 and 78, exactly as it was before, <clears throat> max of 79, just like our last test. So, unchanged, voltages are locked, fan speeds were locked, everything was locked so that it could not fluctuate to create any sort of a weird um, effect in our testing here. That particular article, obviously it helped build Zoid and it helped Igor's lab. Uh, didn't really have any change for us. Maybe 2C, 3C at the most, and it's hard to say whether or not that's margin of error. The temperature in this room has not changed, so ambient temp has no effect on this. Um, that's our findings. Take it as you will. 12th gen, still hot because of that 227 watts of power draw, 29, 28. Let's call it 230. 230 watts of power draw under load. Anyway. All right, guys, there you go. Take that as you will. I'm not saying their article's wrong. I'm just saying it didn't help our particular CPU or you know, its effect on this motherboard. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.